Equip your general for the front line with the all-new Expedition and GP Gen 2 racks from Razorback Off-Road. Hi, my name is Andrew Varga with Razorback Off-Road and today we're going to be doing a rack installation video for the Polaris General. Recently at Razorback Off-Road we came out with two brand new racks for the Polaris General. We have the Polaris General cargo rack which does not include a tailgate and we also for the first time have included the Polaris General Expedition rack which it does include the tailgate. So we're going to be doing the video for the Expedition rack today but this video will also work for the Polaris cargo rack, Polaris General cargo rack. And I'll just get right into it. So to begin, what you do is you wanna tilt the bed back. Okay. And the reason why you wanna tilt the bed back is so that you can have access to these panels. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is when you, you wanna start with the sides and you wanna take these panels off so you can have access to these mounting holes right here on the bed rail. So when, with the bed tilted back, you're gonna wanna take off the side bolt here. A lot of the newer machines have a quick disconnect bolt here, but for this instance, you're gonna wanna grab a T40 Torx bit and you're gonna wanna remove this bolt. So once you remove this bolt, you're just gonna put this off to the side and you're gonna gently lift up this panel like so and it'll just pop off just like that. And then this gives you nice access into the bed panel here. So included in your hardware kit that we provide you, you're gonna wanna grab uh, the 5 16 bolt and the large uh, washer. And what this is, is this is the anchoring system that holds the rack onto the bed. And you're just gonna be installing one of these. And so you're gonna wanna have the bolt, the washer, and you're gonna wanna put that onto the forwardmost hole on the rail of the side rack. Then you're gonna take your anchor and you're gonna place that on the bolt. We've included this laser cut piece here and you're gonna to wanna to put this on first. And then this is the nut that actually locks the rubber into place so that way it doesn't spin when you're tightening, tightening it down. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to Give it a squeeze and then you wanna just kinda of start this bolt onto the rubber. Not all the way, but you just wanna get it started so that way it kinda of holds it on there when you go to install the side onto the machine. So once you have that, what you're then gonna to wanna to grab is we have this longer 5 16 bolt and same thing. Make sure you have the large washer on top and you're gonna want this plastic anchor that goes on the bottom side of the bed and this will go on there like this and then you want the smaller 5 16 washer to go on the bottom there and then we include this nylock and it'll go on the bed in that order okay you want to kind of have this on hand with you when you go to install the side of the rack so i'll go ahead and do that so you want to grab your rack okay so you're gonna to wanna to place the side onto the bed rail up here. And with the hardware in hand, you're gonna go ahead and place the hardware through the front of the bed here. You're gonna place the bottom plug here. You're gonna place your washer and nylock on the bottom and then just, just gently tighten it. For now, you don't need to worry about tightening it just yet. And now once you have that installed, you're gonna move to the back part of the rack and you're gonna grab the same hardware and you're going to place it on this back hole in the bed. And you're gonna do the same thing. Put the plug in the bottom rail here and then just get everything started okay once you have that on there now you can go ahead and begin to tighten the side and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab a half inch socket and a half inch box wrench to tighten down these anchors onto the bed what I typically do to start tightening this down is I start with this front rubber plug 
and I just make sure that the side is pushed up against the bed. We have a flange bent right here, so you want it up against the bed. And then it's got some holes here in the middle and they're, they're access holes. And you can see the other holes in the bed rail right here. And this, just try to align them a bit, as best as you can. And then once that's there, you can go ahead and just start tightening this front plug. And then this is where you're gonna need your box wrench. And you're gonna go ahead and tighten the front anchor on the side up here. Okay. You're gonna to wanna to tighten this to where it's fairly snug, but you don't wanna tighten it too much to where it starts bulging the bottom side of this bed rail where this hole's at. So you want it snug, but not so much to where it starts bulging out the bottom of the bed itself. And then you're gonna to wanna to kind of snake, <laughs> kind of snake in this box wrench a little bit. It's gonna take kind of a little bit of a finesse here. And then you'll hold it on the bottom of that nut and you'll do the same thing as you'll tighten up this bed. So once you have this final anchor tightened down here in the back, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and reinstall your side panel. So grab your side panel. It does have one tab in the back and then it has four tabs on top. So you wanna slide it in, slide in this back tab first, and then the other hole, the other tabs will fall right into the holes and you wanna kinda of push it in. See how it popped in there like that? Then you're gonna push it down Grab your Torx, your Torx screw here, and go ahead and tighten this side panel back onto the machine. All right, and once that, once you have the panel on and the screw tightened down, you're gonna do the same exact thing to the other side. So once you have the other side installed, what you're gonna wanna do is flip the bed back up. Okay, lock it into place. And now you're gonna put your basket tray on top. So you'll grab your tray and you'll lightly place it on the brackets on the sides. Okay. And now you're gonna to wanna to grab your quarter inch hardware. So that we included quarter inch bolts and nuts and you're gonna to want to fasten the basket tray to these brackets that are on the sides now. So take your quarter inch hardware, place the bolt through the top hole here in the front. And you're gonna to wanna to take your washer and just get it started. Don't tighten anything down yet because you may need to make some adjustments to the basket when you're going or when you're done placing all these bolts in there. Okay. So we have two quarter inch bolts that are gonna be on in the inside of the tray. And then you're gonna to wanna to place two on the back part of the tray back here. So once you have these bolts started on this side, um, the reason why I want you to leave them loose is just in case you need to kind of shift the basket a little bit to get the holes to align on the other side. So once you have these bolts in place, I just want you to move immediately to the other side and then same thing, just put, put the bolts in place. So once you have all of the bolts in place, what I want you to do is, is to take a step back and look to see how your tray is justified in between the two sides. So what you're gonna wanna do and you, what you're gonna wanna make sure is you're gonna wanna leave a gap on each side of the tray here. So there's this outer flange that is in the, on the tray and you're gonna wanna make sure that there's about, in this case, I have about a quarter of an inch or so on each side. It's going to vary from machine to machine, but you're gonna to wanna to leave a little bit of gap there. That way, when you're going down the trail or wherever you're riding, it doesn't vibrate or make noise. You wanna leave a little bit of gap there. So once you feel comfortable with how you place your tray, you're gonna to want to have these tools on hand. You're gonna to wanna to have a 3.8 socket, which is gonna be used for the bolts. And you're gonna to wanna to have a 7 16 box wrench, which is gonna be used for the nylock nuts. And what you wanna do is you wanna start with the bolts in the back of the tray. And then you're gonna to wanna to do the bolts that are on the bottom of the tray. So go ahead and start on the, on the back.
The reason why you want to start on the back is so that it pulls the tray and makes sure that it's seated up against this back bracket towards the cab. All right, once you have one side tightened, just make sure that the other side has about the same gap and then go ahead and begin to tighten the backs. All right, so once you finish tightening the bolts on your tray, for the general 1000 cargo rack people, this is, you're done at this point. But for those who have bought the expedition rack, you're gonna want to now move ahead to installing the tailgate. So to begin installing your tailgate, you're gonna wanna grab the latch receiver bracket. And you're gonna wanna grab your quarter inch hardware. So that would be the quarter inch bolt and the nut. And you're gonna want to install it on the welded bracket on the left side of the rack. And when you do, once again, don't tighten this down all the way, but it makes it easier if you tighten it a little bit. So you're gonna want your 3 8 socket and 7 60s box, box wrench. And just lightly tighten it. Don't tighten it all the way. So once you have this snug, you want it to be able to adjust a little bit. So that way when you install the other components on your tailgate, you can make your adjustments necessary. Now we're gonna go install the hinge brackets on the other side. So next we're gonna install the hinge plates and you're gonna wanna grab your hinge plate. You're gonna wanna grab your 5 16 socket cap screw and your nylock, 5 16 nylock nut. And you're gonna want a quarter inch Allen wrench to tighten these down. Okay. When you take the bracket, be sure that it's underneath. Be sure, make sure that these hinge plates are on the bottom. And, and same thing, you're gonna want to start all these bolts, but don't tighten down all the way just yet. So I would get all the bolts started first. Once again, make sure it's on the bottom. So go ahead and get all these bolts started. So once you have all the bolts in place for your upper and lower brackets, you're gonna wanna take your quarter inch Allen wrench and your half inch box wrench, and you're gonna wanna tighten them down, but not all the way. You're still gonna wanna be able to move this bracket left and right. And the reason for that is so that you can make any adjustments that are necessary to get your tailgate to align just right. All right, now that you've tightened your bolts a little bit and make sure that these brackets can still move freely, you're gonna wanna now go and grab your tailgate. Um, but before we do install it, there is one more thing that we need to make sure we install before we put it onto the machine. So we'll go ahead and do that. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna grab some blue thread locker, okay? And you're gonna wanna dab a little bit on there. And the reason why you wanna do that is so that way it does not vibrate off when you're on the trail. Okay. And once you've done that, now you can go ahead and place this on the machine. A little trick, if you're by yourself, I would recommend that you have a buddy, use the buddy system to install the tailgate. That way it doesn't fall on you when you're trying to put it in place. But a little trick to do when you're by yourself is you can actually install it onto the latch plate over here and it holds it pretty well. But like I said, it's much better if you have two people. And then what you're gonna do is the reason why I left those brackets loose is now you can turn the brackets to align it with your tailgate. So the trick of this is you're gonna to wanna to take your shoulder bolt and you want, their smaller washers and these are the washers you're gonna to wanna to put place in between the upper hinge plate on the tailgate. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to install that and then you're gonna to wanna to install it also underneath in between there, okay? And sometimes it takes a little 
It's a little tricky, but it's doable. So you want to make sure that you have the, wa the washer washers in between all of the plates. And then you'll take your 5 16 flange nylock nut and then you're going to just just get it on there so that way it doesn't pop out. And you're going to do the same thing to the bottom. So to tighten down these bolts, you're going to want to have a 3 16 Allen wrench and a half inch box wrench. And you're going to want to go ahead and tighten these down all the way. This one, go ahead and tighten them down all the way. Okay. I'm going to now go into how to align the tailgate onto the back of the machine. So to align your tailgate, what you want to do is you want to take a step back and look at your tailgate in re relation to the sides of your machine. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to kind of just make sure that it's evenly uh, placed between the two sides. And that's why I let you leave these brackets loose because now you can see how I can make the adjustments necessary to make sure my tailgate is centered on my machine. Once, you, once you're happy with your tailgate placement, what you're going to do is you're going to tighten down this left-hand side bracket. You're going to go ahead and snug that down now. Once you have this left bracket tightened down, you're going to move over to your hinge side. So now that you've centered it, one little trick that I like to do is I like to begin and I'll tighten maybe two out of the four bolts on each one, but it, it's kind of a little feel and I'll explain why. So I'll tighten two of these, two on the bottom, and then I'll tighten two on top. And this, this trick always just has worked for me, and I'll explain why. So you get, get them to tighten, but you still can move it up and down. So you want it to be able to kind of hold where you stick it. And what I like to do is I'll actually raise, kind of cheat the tailgate in the up position. And the reason why I do that is so that when I let it go, the weight of the tailgate will actually bring it to where it's perfectly centered into this receiver bracket on the left. And if you do have a spare tire or anything else that you're gonna be placing on the tailgate, you'll wanna cheat it even more, right? Because the, the, the weight of those objects on the tailgate is gonna make it sag even more. So like I said, what I try to do is I try to cheat it, cheat it up a little bit to where it holds in place. And then once I do that, I'll go ahead and begin to tighten all these bolts down. So once you've made sure that all of your bolts are tight here, uh, you're, you're gonna wanna go back to your receiver bracket. And if you notice that it, it doesn't quite latch correctly, but you notice that, okay, my plate is centered within the receiver bracket, but it still is not the, the pull handle here is still not closing. All right, so part of the reason why I tightened that at first is just to kind of hold the tailgate in place and kind of give us a, a reference point to where we kind of cheat the tailgate up so that way when it sags, it'll be in the middle. So now you're gonna to wanna to re-loosen up this receiver plate again. So once you've loosened that up, now just kind of move it and then hear that click. So once that thing clicks into place, that's when it's perfect. That's when it's true, okay? And then you're gonna tighten this down. Right. So now you can test your tailgate and you'll notice that it'll just snap right into place every time now. So I know it's a lot of back and forth, but that's the best way that I know how to make the adjustments to the tailgate and to make it function right. So like I said, tighten the left bracket, tighten the hinge brackets, and then you might need to go back to this receiver plate and then just make that slight last adjustment. And once everything's tightened down, okay, you should be able to just snap your tailgate right into place and it should set right there. All right, last but not least, we do include a gas shock on the tailgate. So you can go ahead and open it all the way. So if you notice on these gas shocks, 
it has this retaining pin on here. And so what you wanna do is you wanna pop it off, okay? And you'll see that it rotates and then it'll slide right out, okay? There's one on this end and there's also one on this end. So you're gonna wanna do the same thing on this end, okay? Keep these clips handy, okay? So what you wanna do is you want the larger end to go underneath the tray. And what you'll do is you'll take your thumb and it, it literally just pops right in, okay? Then you're gonna take your tailgate, do the same thing. You're gonna take that, pop it right in, okay? Now you take these retaining pins and you're gonna just slide them in over there, over that ball screw, and then just make sure that you securely attach it when you're done, okay? All right, all right. So once you have your gas shock in place, you go ahead and close the tailgate and just like that, you're done. So that concludes the installation video for the General 1000 Expedition Rack. If you have any questions about whether your machine is compatible with our products, you can visit our website at razorbackoffroad.com. Also on our website, we have other accessories that you can add to your General. But other than that, we hope you enjoy our products out on the trail and we hope to see you next time.